and I'm Medical Director of the Sports Commission and I'm here to provide medical advice to the High Performance Programme. I'm not going to be your GP and I'll explain how you should access medical care if you get injured as we go through the talk. So I'm there to provide advice in the background and if things aren't working as smoothly as they should be, then I'm, I know quite a few of the GPs, I know the orthopaedic surgeons and, and the radiologists and I can sort of have a quiet word and things usually work a bit smoother. And you know, that's one of the advantages of being on Guernsey. It's a small place, you tend to know everyone. And if you ask them for a favour, it's very difficult for them to say no. So I'm here to ask for favours on behalf of the Sports Commission and you lot as the High Performance Programme. Um, I know nobody likes, think, nobody likes to think about getting injured. Nobody likes to think that they're gonna pick up injuries that may or may not affect their performance. Unfortunately, it is gonna to happen to some of you. It's already happened to some of you already, and I hope those of you that are here who have been injured will tell the ones who haven't been injured that the system does work and we can get you better. So basically, what I'm going to do this evening is to talk about how, if, God forbid, you do get injured, you manage it locally and how you can best use the system that we've put in place. This is going to be different to how they manage injuries in the UK and just because the Guernsey system is quirky and unique would be a polite way of describing it. I think the most important thing is injury prevention and you'll get loads, you know, you should know all about this and we've got Gareth Corbett, some of you have met, he's an exercise physiologist um, and he spoke to your parents last week so if you do speak to your parents go home and ask them what Gareth the exercise physiologist has to say. Um, I think it's important that you have an appropriate training regime and you've got your coaches, you've got the strength and conditioning coach, you've got Rachel to provide psychological support, so your training regime should be sorted. You need, it's important that your technique for whatever sport is good, if you've got bad technique you're going to end up with chronic long term injuries, so that's important. Equipment. You know, some sports are equipment light, you don't need very much others, you know, you do need sort of um, proper equipment that's the right size, fits and, and is appropriate sort of for age and strength and size. And then the last two are equally important as well, and they're, they're nutrition and hydration. And some of the parents got sort of, were quite sort of hung up on the nutrition and I think a good place to start is a healthy balanced diet. You know, we're lucky in Guernsey, we don't have fast food, so you can't go and gorge on McDonald's or Burger King or Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, you've, if you can eat healthily, and then you can modify your diet from there. And again, if you're exercising, so you need to make sure that you're properly hydrated because that will contribute to, to injuries and, and poor performance. I think if you do end up injured, there's a couple of things that you need to decide really and this can be done by you, by your coaches, by your parents and I think some of the things you need to think about is it sports related or not and you know if you've got asthma, if you're diabetic, if you've got other chronic medical diseases or even short term things, you know if you've got tonsillitis or something like that it's going to affect your performance and you need to decide whether the injury or illness that you've got is related to your sport or completely unrelated but affecting your sport. You know, is it major or minor? You know, is it having a major impact on your performance, on your ability to train, or is it, you know, a minor sprain that's going to get better relatively quickly and you then have to decide are you going to seek further help or not? And the last thing you have to decide is, is it an acute injury? You know, if, if you're playing rugby and you go over on your ankle and you've got a minor sprain and you can treat it there and then and you can be up and back training later on in the week, is it the same injury that that's coming back, so have you, got a sh you know, have you got a hip injury that comes back, or a shoulder injury if you're a swimmer, that doesn't last very long but keeps coming back? And then are you left with an injury that is there all the time, that's affecting your ability to train and your performance? So you need, if you can work that out, it's a good place to start. Can you treat yourself? Um, interesting photos, sometimes you're away from where, um, where there's medical help. These, these guys are treating their blisters on the Marathon de Sable in the middle of the desert. You know, blisters are relatively easy as long as you treat them quickly. Um, you can sort it out yourself. And there'll be injuries that you get <coughs> as you're competing that you can sort out yourself. 
So if they're minor, some recurrent injuries, you know, that you may be able to deal with. And as you get more experienced in your sport and, and know what injuries you're likely to, um, to come across, you'll be able to deal with it yourself. And you can also do some prevention. And, you know, if you do get a recurrent injury, if you can tape, tape the joint or, or, or the muscles, then, then that will help you when I talk prevent about screening. It's useful to be able to do blisters. But I would put one provider to bring a blister for you back. need to know what you're doing. I haven't got an example I gave your parents last week. Was that I, I used to play rugby. And we had one chap who um, thought he dislocated his finger. So he put it back. Ten minutes later, fingers out again, put it back. And in the end, during the game, he put it back three or four times. It came out again after the game, and he finally went and had it x-rayed the following day, and it wasn't dislocated, it was broken. So he'd been sort of lining it up, and it had just been popping out. So you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can end up doing more harm than good. There are obviously some injuries that you're not going to be able to treat yourself. And I think it's fairly obvious from the x-ray that you're going to need to seek medical help for this one. Um, not, not all your injuries are going to be that severe fingers crossed but where can you get help from first aid pitch side track side wherever you are from the coach from the physio that may or may not be traveling with your team or if it's uh, you know you'll need to visit the doctor sometimes so you need to be able to decide whether it's something you can sort yourself or with the help of your coach or your physio or you need more help in the longer term who to see you know, I think it depends if you've got a, a minor illness or an injury that's sports related but not really affecting your performance, then you probably don't need to see anyone. If, um, if it's not sports related, like I said earlier, if you've got asthma and it's not well controlled, if you're diabetic and you're not controlling that, or you know, you've got a, a cold or you've had the flu, then that's going to affect your performance. And you may or may not need to see a, see a doctor. And obviously the sports related injuries, if it's having a major impact on your performance, then you're going to need to see someone. If you end up seeing your GP, I think there's a couple of things you have to remember. And what, what should you expect? You should expect them to be able to tell you what's wrong with you. Now that might not happen the first time they see you because you might need some investment, you know, you might need some tests to do it. But once they've worked out what's wrong, they should be able to tell you, either on their own or in conjunction with the physio or your coach, what the treatment plan is and how that's going to get better. And then the, the next thing is to make sure that you organise a review. So whether that's you review it yourself and you work out whether you're actually getting better or not. And if things aren't improving, you need to go back. And what I'd say is go back and see the same doctor. Because the problems tend to occur when somebody rolls up to their GP and they say, oh, you need to do X, Y, and Z. You don't do it, or you do it some of the time, but not all the time as it's recommended, and things don't get better. Then rather than going back and seeing the same doctor who's already met you once, the receptionist or whatever may tell you, oh, he's not available, see someone else. You see a second doctor who has to start from scratch. Same thing happens, you go back and see a third doctor. So sometimes, if it's not really, really urgent, it's worth waiting to see the original person that you saw because they'll have an idea and they'll be able to assess whether you're better or worse. Um, and then they'll also be able to refer you on to the physios or to specialists. So I've said about shopping around, you know, there's no point in seeing a whole heap of different people until they tell you something that you want to hear. Sometimes you're going to hear stuff that you don't want to hear and you're going to have to sort it out. And the other thing is, if you are seeing a doctor or a physio and they're making suggestions and they say they'll write to the physio or write to your coach, ask them to send you a copy of the letter so you have it. And for those of you that, I'm not sure how many of you have had your screen in medical yet, if you're under 17, the paediatricians are going to do it. But what we're going to plan to do is um, scan your medical notes in and send them to you as a PDF so you will have a copy. So if you're away competing and you get injured, you'll have your medical record on your phone or on a, on a memory stick, so you will, will have it. So don't be afraid to ask for copy letters. Um, there are lead GPs at the three of the practices, depending on which one you're registered with. If it's, if it's not a sports-related injury and it's not affecting your performance, then go and see your own GP would be the first thing to do. But if, if you think it is affecting your sport, then there's Bill Barker at Queen's Road, Johnny Pierce at St. Sampson's, 
and Jenny Turner at St. Martin's and there are other GPs as well who've got an interest in sports medicine um, and if these guys are away on holiday or on leave and if you're not sure Jeremy's easily contactable and uh, he usually gives me a ring to say who's available and I'll ring the surgery and see who's around and try and sort something out. Um, it's very much a team approach you know and you can see all the people that may be involved in managing your injury but the central person is you. As the athlete, you have to take charge to a certain extent. It's your injury, your sporting performance, and you'll be able to tell whether things are getting better or not. So, you know, don't just let people do things to you. Take an active part. Talk to your parents, talk to your coach, talk to the physio and the doctor and anybody else who happens to be involved about what you can do to make yourself better. If things aren't getting better, then there are things that you need to think about. Have we identified the problem properly? So have we got the right diagnosis? You know, we're not perfect, we do make mistakes, and it can become apparent with time that things are slightly different to what you first, first thought. And it may be that you've had a problem that we've sorted out, but that's identified another problem, so it's, you, know, you, you have to get to the root cause. If the diagnosis is right and you're still not getting better, you have to wonder whether the, you have to assess whether the treatment is right or not. So have you been given the right treatment plan? Then the most important thing is, have you actually followed it? It's no good going to your doctor being, or your physio and being given advice and having a list of exercises. And Jeremy knows how, um, how often this happens. Have you done your exercises? Hmm, no. Do you know what they are? Yes, they're on a sheet of paper, on the fridge, or on my desk, or, and you haven't even looked at them. You know, you're not going to get better without putting some effort in. And again, it may need amending, that the exercises or, or the treatment for one injury has identified something wrong somewhere else, so we need to deal with it as a whole. And then I think, rather than it being a treatment failure, it can be that your expectations aren't quite right. So it may be that you think, oh, it's only a minor, minor injury, I'll be better in two or three weeks, when a more realistic time scale will be six or eight weeks. And, and that can be really frustrating, particularly if you've got a major competition or a major trial coming up, and you may have to adapt your expectations and your expectations about your performance so you can deal with the injury. And you, know, you may decide not to compete, you may decide to compete, but accept that you're not going to be able to compete at 100%, and that's something that you need to discuss with your coach and your parents. Um, so I think the important things are don't ignore them. You know, they're not going to go away. The majority of them aren't going to go away. And, and they can lead to long-term problems which are much more difficult to deal with. So decide, you know, if you identify that you've got an injury or an illness that's affecting your performance, make a conscious decision that you're going to do something about it. And that can be as simple as discussing it with your coach, discussing it with the physio, discussing it with your parents, and then moving on from there and coming up with a plan. And if you need to see a doctor, then do it and follow the advice that you're given. And so if I've whizzed through that, I'm happy to take any questions, um, either now in front of the whole group, or if you want to call me later, I'll be around for the rest of the evening. Um, you can have a sort of a chat um, in private.